Hello guys, this is Arvind here from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session on deploying Java web applications in AWS. So before we move any further, let us have a quick look at the agenda for today's session. First, we will try to know what exactly is AWS. Then we will talk about what are the benefits of deploying Java web applications in AWS. And then we will see a demo in which I'll show you how do you deploy Java web applications in AWS. So this is a very simple agenda and I hope you guys understand it. And guys, one more thing before proceeding further, just subscribe to the Edureka's YouTube channel and also hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from Edureka. And also, if you're someone who's looking for a course in AWS, then you can find the link for that course in the description box below. So, without any further ado, let us begin with our first topic what is AWS? So, AWS or Amazon Web Services is a cloud service from Amazon which provides services in the form of building blocks. These building blocks can be used to create and deploy any type of application in the cloud. These services or building blocks are designed to work with each other and result in applications which are sophisticated and highly scalable. So this was the formal definition of AWS and I hope you guys know that since we are talking about AWS. So this is nothing but a cloud computing. So we are talking about cloud computing here. So for those who don't know what cloud computing is, let me just quickly tell you the definition of it. So it is the use of remote servers on the internet to store manage and process data rather than a local server or a personal computer. So there are basically three categories in cloud computing. The first one is the software as a service. So this allows companies to use software without having to purchase them, which reduces the expenditure of the company drastically since they are already installed on the cloud server. They can be quickly deployed and therefore it saves a lot of time for the companies. The second category is the platform as a service. So it allows developers to build applications collaborate on projects without having to purchase or maintain infrastructure. And the third and the final category is the infrastructure as a service. So it allows companies to rent servers storage space etc from a cloud provider. So when we talk about AWS, it's more of an infrastructure as a service. So now let us take a deep dive into AWS and understand what all services it has to offer us. So as you can see on the screen, these are the various domains in AWS compute migration security identity and compliance and many more. So if you talk about compute, it is used to process data on the cloud by making use of powerful processors which serve multiple instances at a time. The next domain is the storage and content delivery. The storage as the name suggests is used to store data in the cloud. This data can be stored anywhere, but content delivery on the other hand is used to cache data nearer to the user so as to provide low latency. The third domain is the database. First, the database domain is used to provide reliable relational and non relational database instances managed by AWS. The next domain is the networking. It includes services which provide a variety of networking features such as security, faster access and so on. The next domain is the management tools. It includes services which can be used to manage and monitor your AWS instances. So guys, whatever I'm discussing right now is just an overview. I'll show you on the Amazon Web Services website or the portal about this domains. The next domain is the security and identity. It includes services for user authentication or limiting access to a certain set of audience on your AWS resources. So these are the various domains of AWS and I'll just quickly show you about this services or the domains that we just discussed. Okay, so if you go on the AWS portal here, you can find in the services tab the various domains that we just discussed such as compute storage management database security identity and compliance migration. So these are the various services that AWS provides us. I hope I'm clear with whatever we have covered till now. So now let us talk about why Java web applications in AWS or the advantages that AWS has to offer us. So the first and foremost advantage is the easiness of the AWS. So AWS is designed to allow application providers and vendors to quickly and securely host your applications, whether an existing application or a new software as a service based application. You can use AWS management console or well documented web services APIs to access AWS's application hosting platform. The next advantage is the flexibility. AWS enables you to select the operating system, programming language, web application platform, database, and other services that you need. With AWS, you receive a virtual environment 
that lets you load the software and services your application requires. This eases the migration process for existing applications while preserving options for building new solutions. The next advantage or the benefit is the cost effectiveness. Here you pay only for the compute power storage and other resources that you use with no long term contracts or upfront commitments. So this is I think a very big advantage that AWS has to offer us and the next benefit is the reliability. With AWS you take advantage of a scalable reliable and secure global computing infrastructure. The virtual backbone of Amazon.com's multi billion dollar online business that has been honed for over a decade. And the next advantage here is the scalability using AWS tools auto scaling and elastic load balancing your application can scale up or down based on the requirement or the demand backed by Amazon's massive infrastructure. You can have access to compute and storage resources whenever you need them. And the next benefit that we are going to discuss is the security. AWS utilizes an end to end approach to secure and harden our infrastructure. This includes physical operational and software measures. So these were the advantages of AWS. And now the main part of our session like how does it work? Like how do you deploy a Java web application in AWS? So before we see how to deploy Java web application, let me just share a few best practices that you must follow. The size and installation complexity of web applications can vary greatly. Therefore, there is rarely a one size fits all solution for deploying and hosting Java applications. However, there are some universal best practices to consider when deploying any web application. First, understand the deployment, installation, and configuration characteristics of the applications. Next, understand application expectations from initial deployment to future scalability, availability, and backup and recovery requirements. Next, use automation whenever possible for deployment and other tasks where consistency is important. And finally, leverage source code or application repositories to protect your application. Now let us see various types of Java applications and their mechanisms. AWS offers several tools and services to enable both AWS managed and customer managed Java application deployment. So guys as you can see on the screen there's one table and this shows a high level reference to help you identify the most appropriate option for a specific scenario. So say for example if you have a custom Java application which is developed in Eclipse then the deployment mechanism for that is single click deployment from within the Eclipse and the deployment method or the environment for that is AWS toolkit for Eclipse. So I'm going to show you in the later part of this session. How do you do this in Eclipse and if you have a Java web application which is deployed as a jar file or a war file or maybe even a zip file. So in that case the mechanism is automated deployment of packaged application using AWS Elastic Beanstalk. So you have to make use of AWS Elastic Beanstalk service of AWS for deployment of such applications. So now let us discuss a few things about AWS Elastic Beanstalk. So Elastic Beanstalk is an easy to use service for deploying and scaling Java web applications. Elastic Beanstalk supports several platform configurations for Java applications including multiple versions of Java with the Apache Tomcat application server and Java only configurations for the applications that do not use Tomcat. The Java only option allows customers to include any required library jar files in the source bundle for the Java web applications that do not use a web container or use a different one such as jetty or a glassfish. Once deployed the elastic beanstalk automatically manages capacity provisioning load balancing and auto scaling. So guys this was about the AWS elastic beanstalk as you can see on the screen. This is the diagram or this is the mechanism that AWS elastic beanstalk follows. So I'm going to show you how does this work. So now we are going to see the demo part of this session and here I will show you how do you create a Java web application in Eclipse and first we will deploy it locally on a local server say for example Apache Tomcat and then we will deploy that application on AWS. Okay, so this is going to be the flow of this demo and before moving to the demo part there are a few prerequisites that you must follow. So as you can see on the screen you need JDK. JDK 8 or a higher version Tomcat 8 or any higher version of Tomcat Eclipse ID and free AWS account. So these are the prerequisites that you must fulfill and now let us talk about the demo part. Okay, so here I will open Eclipse 
and uh, first you need to create a project here in Eclipse. So if you create click on file new and here I will select dynamic web project. So here you can name your project whatever name that you want. Say for example my project in this case and uh, here in the target runtime you must select the Apache Tomcat version that you're using. So in my system I have installed Apache Tomcat that is version 9. So here it is showing me Apache Tomcat. Okay. And uh, the dynamic web module version for this is 4.0. Okay, so if you click on next again, you click on next. So finally click on finish here and your project will be created. So what you need to do here is right click on your project click on new and select a JSP file. So JSP is nothing but Java server page. So here you have to name your file. I'll name it as my file or whatever name that you want and click on finish. So here you can see the JSP file has been created. This is the project which I've created before and uh, here is the JSP file that I'm talking about. So you can find that file here in web content. Okay, index.jsp. So what you need to do here is you have to just add one simple line in the body section of this JSP. Just a simple comment kind of thing or a test kind of thing. So here I'm just writing one sentence. This is a test JSP being served from the AWS. So you can write whatever you want and we are just going to test this whether it's working properly or not. Okay, and one more thing that I have to show you here. If you right click on project go on build path configure build path and if you click on project facets here. So here in the runtime you must select Apache Tomcat version 9 or version 8 or whatever version you're using this box must be checked. Okay, so if this is fine. You're good to go. So as you can see this server has been added here. Tomcat version 9 server at the local host. So once this is added what you need to do here is simply right click on the project run as run on server. So it will ask you choose an existing server or manually define. So here this has been selected choose an existing server Tomcat version 9 and click on finish. So once you do this on the console you can see this has been displayed. This is a test JSP being served from AWS. So now we have deployed this application on the local server and now we will deploy this on AWS. So for that what you need to do here is you have to download the plugin AWS toolkit plugin. So for that click on help in Eclipse and click on Eclipse marketplace. So now here you have to search for AWS plugin type AWS plugin and if you search this it might take a few seconds. Okay, so here as you can see AWS toolkit for Eclipse 2.0. So this has already been installed on my Eclipse and if it is not installed you just have to click here install and it gets downloaded. Okay, so this was about the AWS toolkit plugin and next what you need to do here is you have to go on your AWS home page. So here in the AWS documentation and a reference guide you have to click on AWS security credentials. We need access keys here so that you know the server on Eclipse points to the remote server on AWS. Okay, so for that you have to click on this section understanding and getting your security credentials. So once you come here you have to click on access keys. Okay, so now you have to click on this IAM console. So here you have to click on this IAM console application tab. Okay, so here since I've already created access keys. So that's why it is showing me an option of delete your root access keys. So what you can do here is click on manage security credentials. Once you click here you'll be navigated to this page and here you can select continue to security credentials and access keys. Okay, so since I've already created one access key it is showing me here the access key ID and if you want to create one new access key you can select the option here of create new access key. So once you select this option of creating new access key. So you'll be directed to a page where you will get this access key ID and secret access key. So you just need to copy that from the AWS portal and you must save it somewhere. So say for example you can create a text file and you can save it here because we will be needing this in Eclipse. So once you save it now what you do is go back to Eclipse. Okay, so what we need to do here is we have just created access key in the previous step and here once you come to Eclipse click on Windows preferences. Okay, so from this left hand section you have to select AWS toolkit 
and here the profile name by default is default and here you you need to paste those key id and the secret access key over here as you can see i have already done that so you just need to paste it here and click on apply and close so once you do that what you need to do here is as you can see there's one server folder here right click on servers click on new so here what you need to select is click on server server click on next so here you have to select the tomcat version that you're using so in my case i'm using tomcat version 9 server server host name is localhost and the server name is by default if you click on next okay so here you have to add the projects that you want to add here so in my case my project name is web demo and i have to add it here okay click on finish so once you click on finish you'll be able to see one server that has been created here the name of the application the web demo and aws environment at aws elastic beanstalk and here this is the region asia pacific mumbai okay so this is how you create a server which points to the remote server on aws so now for running this application just simply right click on the project run as and here you will see an option of aws sam local so if you click here to view the output you what you need to do is right click on the server here and if you click on amazon web services view running version okay so as you can see here this is a test jsp being served from aws so this is the message or the text that we had written in the body section of the jsp file that we created so this message shows that our application has been deployed so this was the output here so before moving further we'll be needing a war file of this project so for that you just click right click here on project and click on export so here select war and you can save the war file to whatever destination that you want okay so in my case i've saved it on e drive okay so if you come to the aws home page in the services section you need to click on elastic beanstalk okay so once you click on elastic beanstalk so here you have to create click on create new application I have to name the application and the description okay so once you do that you have to click on create so you can name whatever you want here my web app description is optional here and tags as of now we don't need any tags and click on create so since i've already created one application here demo app okay so i'll be running this application so this is just for your information i'm creating one new app here and now for this application my web app there's no environment currently okay so what you need to do here is click on create one now okay so here you have to select the web server environment click on select okay so domain name as of now you can leave it to blank description is optional here okay platform so here you need to select tomcat because we deployed our application on tomcat okay so we are creating that tomcat instance here so that's why we chose tomcat here here you need to upload your own code so if you click here it asks for a zip file or a war file so in the previous step you created a, i mean you exported one war file of your project and you saved it to a particular destination so in my case i saved it to e drive so just you have to click on upload here and choose this file okay so here in my e drive this there's this war file web demo dot war if you click here so this is added here and click on upload and here you have to click on create environment so as you can see here this will take a few minutes and once the environment is created as you can see here you'll be able to see this this page here which shows all the events related to that application and the health of that application once the environment has been created what you have to do is just upload and deploy click on upload and deploy so choose the file that war file that we created from eclipse so once you choose this file you have to click on deploy so once that is done you will be able to see there's one url here that has been created and if you click on this url so as you can see here this is a test jsp being served from aws so this shows that our application has been successfully deployed on aws and this is how you deploy a java web application in aws so guys with this we have come to the end of this session i hope you have enjoyed this session and you have understood whatever i have explained here if you have any queries please write them in the comment box below and my team is here to help you with your doubts so this was all from me 
in this session on deploying Java web applications in AWS. Thank you so much. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!